any hot take. You just leave it open. No one can question it. There's no debate. I'm going to leave it up to the AI to edit it. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm excited. Oh, no. I'm talking about Taco Bell. Oh, that's stupid. Not using Vim. Unit tests are useless. Now we got to hire a team of data scientists and spend the next six months doing analysis and training. And I only test in production. That's a whole other discussion. That could be a separate one. Have everyone's consent. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess this is, so. This is going to be going to be the the dev sync. I think that's what we're going to call it for now. And just some tech bros talking about tech stuff and mm. dev stuff. And I think yeah. we're just right when on. AI when AI takes over, I'll be the last Vim user. I'll be the last one. <laughs> I'll be in it. A rare breed. I've been thinking yeah. about picking it up. I, I'm I'm close. I'm I'm real close. There's been a few times, especially yesterday when I, I tried to uh, tried to use something I saw online was dollar sign null um, in PowerShell. You can do like a dollar sign null carrot into a file and it'll create the file. So, oh, that's I, stupid. Yeah, because I couldn't because I can't just do touch file name uh, yeah. in PowerShell and then fought with that for 30 minutes to realize that it's because it put it in Unicode and not ASCII. And so it just wasn't loading the file. I thought I was losing my mind. It's like, I, I guess I don't understand Go because like I can't get this to work. And then recreated the file like no, it was it was that was it. So yeah. So here here's the fix for that. You can do what I did to put some backstory to it. Essentially, I was messing around with my PC, which usually one runs Windows 11, and I have lots of stuff on it. But it's mostly for video games and just kind of you know it's always good to have a Windows PC around the house because I'm mostly Mac based. Mm -hmm. So whenever you need to use a Windows machine, you know it's good to have. But I was messing around with it and I was like, yeah. Windows kind of sucks with like programming or anything. So I'm just going to dual boot Linux on it. I'll have an external hard drive. I'll put Linux on it. So then at any moment I can just quickly, you know, switch back and forth. Well, I selected the wrong hard drive and I wiped the entire PC and I didn't dual boot Windows. I got rid of it. And you know what? No regrets. I've never been happier. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm now, yeah, I, I, I'm now not even, not even a Windows at all. I'm, I'm Mac, which is basically, you know, Linux like, like it's Unix and then Linux. So you save yourself a lot of trouble, man. Windows subsystem yep. for Linux. I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. WSL. Um, yeah. So you get like, so I'm like running full Ubuntu for development and mm -hmm. then I just hook it straight into VS Code. All in Windows. Yeah. I wasn't trying to dev on it. I was trying to literally get a full running AI model on an operating system and uh set up like a web server and everything like that so i i don't know if wsl even wsl2 because i know they have you know version 2 out i don't know if it's that com compatible or like that capable would be a better word um a i lot kind of, of been wrong. probably work through for something where you need a lot of efficiency right yeah um but hey i don't even have to worry about it it's gone there you go there you Same. go this whole yeah yeah it just honestly it just made it easier now i don't have to choose i just stuck <laughs> <laughs> you have one choice just works. yeah yeah it works it works i did i did get the uh, wsl set up at one point it took a little while i forget I, I think it was i was still on windows 10 and there was some stuff that was out of date so i had to go through quite a few steps to finally get it hooked into vs code uh but but that is pretty cool they were able to just run run the, the wsl and just have linux running underneath windows which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy agreed all right. Um, All right. So, what do you got for us, Jay? What, what's today? What's today's agenda? What do we start with? Well, I was going to start with Sora, okay, first, and then we'll go maybe move on from that. I think Eric had had a contribution as well. But uh, you guys have right, seen so Sora. Right? I know Will. Yeah. I know you've what seen is it? Sora. So, I'd say just just for the sake, go over it if you just don't for mind. The sake. So this is text to video that OpenAI just released a couple of days ago. So mm -hmm. which is yeah, it was just a few days ago. Um, but yeah, it's it's crazy, uh, pretty mind blowing. Like basically real looking video, like very very stable looking video, all completely generated just from a prompt. And Ooh. right now, it's I think they're under sixty seconds, but it's kind of mind blowing, especially just compared to anything that was uh, popular before. I mean, I guess I don't know. I I hadn't been keeping up with everything. I know there were a few different models, but like Runway ML and some of the other ones were were pretty good. But they definitely had that that AI glossiness to it. And then this thing just basically a lot of those videos look real. It's kind of mind blowing. So have um, you seen this, Eric? I have not. No, but all I can oh, think of yeah. is what if you just told you me got homework. a video of three guys and then doing a <laughs> podcast, is it going to generate? Dude, I mean, if you got an extra screen over there while, I while I 
while I go yeah. into a little bit about it, uh, feel free to look up, honestly, Sora, S-O-R-R-A, OpenAI. There's S-O-R-A. A lot of there's, oh, S-O-R-A. A lot of the samples are on YouTube. So like, you'll just get YouTube links straight, straight to it. You don't have to like, you know, deep through some like um, blog post or anything. But yeah, it's pretty insane. The The biggest thing when I saw it, obviously, as everyone probably remembers, and if you don't remember, you can easily look it up as well, which is the Will Smith meme with him eating spaghetti and that like yep. horrible AI video. And that was, I think, 10 to 12 months, you know, around that time. So like 10 to 10 months to a year from, from now. And just months. in that short yeah. period of time. Yeah. It's like already progressed so far. It's pretty insane. And so there's, there's two thoughts. First thought that comes to my mind is as developers here in DevSync, AI video doesn't threaten us. I mean, it's just video, right? And they're not coding applications fully yet. Right. So I'm like happy to see this because I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like I could totally use this. This is like innovative and in progress. But then there's the afterthought that comes with it where it's like if they've made this much progress in less than a year for video, how much progress will they make in other mediums? Like maybe songs like music, right? Because, you know, AI music exists, but it's terrible. So maybe progress in that could be insane in eight months. And now they're fully producing albums. And then, like I said, other disciplines where... Maybe AI right now is terrible at developing apps, but then in eight months, it's really good. And maybe it's terrible at writing books. And then in eight months, it creates the next Harry Potter. So like seeing this progress in video sparks joy for people who aren't threatened by it. But then you have to remember deep down that your discipline's next. Like they're coming for you <laughs> next. <laughs> and then it's like, what's going to happen then? So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Did you, did you see them? Scary. Yeah. We're getting a live reaction from Eric here. What do you, what do you think? Oh, this is awesome. Like... <laughs> I mean, I've been doing a lot of the image generation for, you know, like project celebrations and just kind of mm-hmm. things to send to the teams and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, which has been really funny. You put, you put in things like Santa Claus sitting at a computer desk hacking with multiple monitors. Yeah. I mean, it, it generated some hilarity, but like, oh, I can do video now. Yeah. Like, it, was, it, it just got real. Let's just say that. It just got real. For sure. Well, especially especially since the video, right? Like if you really pay attention, if you really look at the assets, especially as with the most common, even in images is hands, right? That's the hardest for AI to do. Even in images, video, it's no different hands. Another thing that video gets, at least now that's weird is everything appears to always be in slow motion. They like default to this slow motion filter to all their videos. Like it's never in like this fast paced environment, maybe because it's easier to process and it's, you know, more, convincing if they can tell the ai to put it in slow motion but even then you'll see some like weird walking glitches because like the video is moving in slow motion so you'll see like one guy like kind of like like jump skipping like yeah "Eh," you know so like if you look for it you'll see that it's ai but again the common phrase that you see with all these things is that this is the worst it's going to be this is the absolute worst that we're seeing so it's only going to get better so if it's this convincing now and it's you know, considered the worst when, when it becomes the best, then it's like, yeah, who's telling it does, yeah. it does pretty well with like motion blur mm-hmm. kind of just like wrap, like rough up, you know, cut off the rough edges. Sure. But the, it's, it's watching, it's watching the background. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So like there's, the, you know, the one on the homepage or whatever, is like a, a woman walking on Tokyo street or whatever. Yeah. And, and just, if you focus on that, obviously that's the focal point. Amazing. Right. But if you watch the background players, like the gate of some of the, yeah extras walking it's just it doesn't match the scale of the camera moving and just all that so it, it's but i mean you have to be looking for it i mean the like this right is, this is ridiculous <laughs> right is to think that yeah when you first look at it it mm-hmm. basically looks real i mean and somebody was pointing out um especially like when you're watching movies and stuff that you know the first time you see it you're you're really not looking at the background True. so half the time you're not even going to notice really what's going on in the background so, I mean, when they start doing an hour long prompt and it just generates all of it and, you know, and it's cohesive and stable like this, you're really not going to be paying attention too much to what's going on. You're just going to be watching the story that's just been generated out of nothing in front of you. So, um, but yeah, it, but it is crazy though, just to think that, you know, there's minor things in the background that, you know, don't quite look right, but the rest of it's pretty good. So there's not a whole lot, yeah, not a whole lot of a distance to go. And I think for like the first use case for this technology um, is that it doesn't need to be perfect, right? So a common industry that, as far as I'm concerned, makes a lot of money is stock video, 
right? Because there's so many weird, like specific things that companies or like you were just saying, Eric, like you need to build a presentation, right? And you wanted Santa because it was this holiday season, right? Like who has random photos like that and no one. So these stock companies generate extremely weird scenarios just to have them in their backlog. So at any point, if a company needs that weirdly specific instance, they have a photo for it or a video for it, and then they sell it. And, you know, and so like stock companies have literally preyed on that type of industry where like we have the weird, awkward, crazy stuff that you can't find anywhere else because like no one's ever thought to do it. Well, now you don't need a stock industry. You can come up with the perfectly crazy specific scenario that you need and just type it into a text prompt and you no longer need to reach out to these companies. And so like, that means they don't need to hire models. That means that those models don't have income, at least this form of income. So it kind of like creates this weird vacuum in that whole industry, like how, how the stock photo and stock video industry is going to handle this. You know, the first thing I thought of when I was kind of flipping through some of these, like we're not that far away from you guys remember like the full motion video cutscenes in video games. Mm, yeah. Where it was just, like you were just hammering away to get to that next, all I think of is Final Fantasy seven, but like all you wanted to do was get to that next cutscene to, yeah. to, to see the, you know, I think about it now, the realistic animation. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, I mean, those could have been generated in probably minutes and I'm sure they took months to build those. Right. Right. Video games um, is a great that. application for all of this too. Yeah. Previs too, like in like when people are making movies, you know, they do those previs shots, but those are like with people and with you know, right, rudimentary yeah. rigs and all that. Like now, all of a sudden, you might be able to do pretty detailed previs shots. Yeah, I mean, that's and see what happens. That's an Crazy. excellent point yeah. because, like, even if the technology doesn't advance at all, it stays like this today. Like, full stop. We will always see little weird instances that it's AI. Like, like I said, the hands will always be awkward. The gait of someone walking will always be a little off. Like it will always be tells. Let's say it never advances. Even the applications of what you were just saying, Eric, like, like if you had an idea and you wanted to pitch it to Netflix, sometimes it's very hard to get what's out of your, in your head out into someone to see. And not everyone's an artist, not everyone's a cartoonist, not everyone can take something and write it down in this beautiful, you know, um, like script. So if all you can do is be like, man, I have this awesome show idea. Let me just make those quick little scenes, those images and those videos and just stitch it together in iMovie and make this like six minute trailer in probably 20 minutes total. That could be the next blockbuster hit that someone who's just sitting in a room being creative has thought of one day. And then like this, this growth of creation, this growth of creativity from everyone is so accessible. But yeah. like I said, it threatens everyone. It threatens other people. So there's, you know, there's always good and bad, right? So for sure. Uh, like I'm stuck on this 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 one with the it's like an extreme close up of a gray haired man. Yeah. yeah, and it's like the ver uh, um, uh, what is that called the the verite of the camera like you know it's got the kind of wobbliness to it the the background mm. people are moving the blur is good so it kind of like kind of roughs out any I think like you're talking about these artifacts that would be make it obvious that it's a like this one if 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 I was not looking at this website knowing yeah what right. you just like. I'd be like, huh, it's a great 10 second clip. Yeah, like yeah. someone spent a little time in, yeah. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah, um, yeah, this thing's cool, this thing's cool. What, what, any, any other final thoughts, Jay? What, what else are you thinking about, Sora? I was gonna see if I can share my screen real quick, just for reference. Let's do an entire window. There we go. Oh yeah, so That was what you were talking about, right? Yeah, yep. ridiculous. Yeah, just, yeah, that's, that's just insane. insane. Like, just, you see I mean, like even the people in the background, like that, they, they, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's blurred enough, but it really looks like they're walking at the right pace. And yeah, the car just suddenly appearing out of nowhere, though. Yeah, it's like it's yeah. backing and up, then it, like but it, and then it backs. No, I don't think it even backs up. I literally think it appeared. Watch, watch it, right behind. It his might have kind ear, of floated right yeah. here. Like there's a person, person, still people. Oh, it, okay. Now it no, it's, yeah, it's just like, like, oh, it is but, there at the beginning. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's just it's just such okay. it's such a ah, such a short loop. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But still, it, yes, yeah, cool. it is crazy, and it and it's cool because they even have the prompt here, so you can see, you know, how they oh, yeah. how they came up with it. So, uh, I guess you can't see that. There we go. Um, one sentence. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Decently long sentence. Well, and then it, and then especially like with images, where you can go and then reverse 
And so like the image, you can have the AI just interpret the image and give you the, the prompt back where mm-hmm. it's like, what kind of prompt would create that image? And yeah, it's crazy. Um, so on the, on the flip side of this, uh, Google released their Gemini 1.5. Well, they have Gemini 1.5. I don't know. I think it's in early access. I actually just signed up to see if I can get access to it today. Um, nice. But it takes a 1 million token input. So they're able to upload an entire movie to it. They uploaded a 45 minute movie into the prompt and then started asking it about specific times in the movie. And it could tell you the timestamp of when it happened. So it can just, it watches the whole movie, understands it, comes back with answers about the movie, which is just. <laughs> yeah, I saw that demo. Just That's insane. Awesome. The one that like, and then the other one, they drew a picture and it was able to understand the picture and then find where that thing was happening. And it was just like a little stick figure picture. And it was like, oh, yeah, I got you. That's the part where like water falls out of it comes out of the uh, water tank and uh, splashes on the guy. And it's just like, yeah, that's... it was basically like you drew a scene that you remembered from the movie and you took that image and you uploaded it. And it was just, there's literally like a, like imagine you drawing on a piece of paper, taking a picture with your phone, then uploading the image from your phone and then saying, yeah, this happened where and then it knows from your crude sketch what scene to take you to so it gives you the timestamp in the movie of which that scene that happens yeah 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 it's insane <laughs> now as with all demos they yeah. find the best the best of the best right they tried this 500 times and it worked amazing five times out of the 500 so they share the five right i'm just obviously making up numbers um that's how all demos are, right? I mean, here in DevSync, we're all used to making demos. We've all done the same thing. Like you set it up so your environment has the perfect data that showcases the most advanced feature. It is specifically that account ID or specifically that user ID, right? That is going to give you that best result. So when you flash it up on the screen, it looks pretty beautiful. Like, you know, you, you fabricate demos to your advantage all the time. Um, so it's set always taken with a grain of salt. Notification, yeah. hey, don't make any changes to this environment. We're doing a demo. <laughs> yeah. 45 minute local, lockdown. Yeah. Local build on a laptop that you carry with you. Right. It's not connected to the internet at any point in time. The data has been static that it's backed up somewhere. Like, yeah. Right. Sometimes you don't even use the data. You make a mock server so that literally no one has credentials to the mock server, but you, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it can get hardcore for, for demos for sure. For sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, for then, conference demos, no man. It's there's a repo somewhere that has a Docker image that I will, you know, I can pull it down and rebuild everything. Mm-hmm. Data mm-hmm. If I had to. Um, <laughs> don't that's, right. That's, right. that's right. That's right. I mean, you see like these big. You've seen these big presentations recently where it's like, oh, big announcement, and they go in and they do a thing, and it didn't work. Right. Right. It's some AI related, some windshield glass related. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I guess it was yeah. the windshield. The, oh, the side yeah, driver's side window. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> right. Could it's, mean anything. It's, yeah, for sure. Um, well, I was going to say, and kind of to your point, I mean, I, I don't know if it's, you know, again, it could have been crafted, but even going back to Sora, how they actually included examples of things that don't work, uh, which is cool as well. And, you know, obviously they have a whatever five to one of mm-hmm. ones that work versus ones that don't work. So they might have cherry picked that a little bit too, but still, but the fact that, you know, it's able to create a lot of the stuff and even the stuff that doesn't really work. I mean, there's the guy that's running backwards on a treadmill that's moving the correct direction. I mean, mechanically, it still looks pretty good. Like it really doesn't look that off. And someone would, someone would use that as a stock video. Like that's still applicable (laughs) video. Like for sure. Yeah. You know, there's, there's someone who's trying to pitch a sales or a product meeting that would use someone running on a treadmill backwards as an analogy for something. Right. So like they would throw that up there. It's a great point. Yeah, that's a great point. Still, still valuable. Yeah. Somebody will still use it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's crazy. Um, if we want to, we want to go down this, this route a little bit more, I was actually just watching a video today that was talking about, uh, uh, AGI. Uh, so artificial mm. general intelligence and how, we're getting very close where it's like uh, Thanos assembling the the infinity stones where we have voice to text, we have text to video, we have speech to text or whatever, uh, text to image, and then, you know, it can generate code. It's It's getting to the point where it can pretty much do anything. Oh, visual recognition, I guess, is the other one where it can understand images, recognize objects, 
And so you kind of start putting all these different things together and you essentially have an entity that could do anything that a human can do. So, so I, I would love to put myself in the hot seat first. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Um, general intelligence, AGI, right? That's the acronym, uh, is one of the hardest definitions of today because everyone asks Google, they have a different definition than Microsoft, which is a different definition than OpenAI, which is a different definite definition than probably all three of us here. Um, some people say we already have it. Some people say we're not even close because again, their version is just, it varies. So I think that's hard, but even putting that to the side, you were mentioning one entity that can do it all. Is that true? I want to clarify because all of these multimodal models are multiple AI models that leverage each other's individual skills. So it'd be like a team of people and only one person can draw. Only one person can make video. Only one person can read. And so the reader speaks to the drawer and then the drawer draws and then the video person makes it like you're all working as a team in this multimodal classroom, like divvying up this result versus one person who can do it all. Right. If I'm not mistaken, I think these examples are multimodal, meaning it's not one AI, not one general intelligence, but it's basically just a bunch of AIs. So does that count as does that count as, you know, artificial general intelligence if it's multiple or does it actually have to still be one? That I, And to be honest, I was kind of wondering about that today with with Sora. And it's like, does does the Sora model, is it really only video generation or is it also can you also just ask it things and it can it can it can answer your like chat GPT would or whatever uh, or GPT four or whatever. So that's yeah, that's a good question. I don't know if these are separate models um, or if it's all from one supermodel uh mm -hmm. no nah, no pun intended there um and the but i would ask then i guess how much do you think about things like that so if you look at a computer a computer is essentially different things like that they handle different aspects but when you're looking at the screen you're not thinking about the fact that it's different things happening you're not thinking about there's ram there's a graphics card there's two separate processors you know for for compute well, every instruction graphics. Every, 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 every instruction, if I'm not mistaken, I could be making myself stupid right now, and that's fine, goes through the compute unit, the AGU or whatever. The, so everything, every bit, every byte goes through that one component that calculates the math of the entire computer, right? That's the, the task manager, so to speak, at the very bare lowest form. So it is one thing that truly does do it all. It's just that it uses its arms and its legs and its eyes, right? That's the graphics card, the RAM, the storage. Those are its like appendages but it is one brain just like a human one brain that controls everything it just leverages the stuff that it has okay eric I didn't wonder, no, so i was thinking about that a little bit and i'm wondering are, are you guys is it more of a deliberation of like are we trying to figure out what the definition of agi is or are we kind of like just kind of noodling on is that the right sort of uh modality with the multi multi-model thing because when I think about it, I'm like, is this one of those things where we are just imprinting our sort of the way that we work into the mm. AI world, right? We, we build specific models because it's like, you know, there's a jack of all trade, master of none or whatever that is. But it's sure. just like you would have a person like just take take your example. You'd have a person who is the artist or actually let's let's take it in the tech field because, I mean, we can obviously all relate to that. So you, you've got a programmer who's taking requirements from, you know, a product person who's generating the requirements from like a set of business requirements. And then we you know, align all of that into an architecture and a tech design and all that. But those are all specialties, right? Mm -hmm. They all have their own set of limitations and you know, frameworks that get applied. Um, but I, I'd be curious to get you guys thoughts. Like, I think if you have a single intelligence that does all of that, um, and maybe I've just been doing this a long time, I feel like there, there is something lost there. Um, a little bit. So you don't want a single intelligence, you're saying. You're saying multimodal is the better approach. I mean, just the way that I'm thinking of it, just gut gut feeling, right? Yeah, okay. Um, mm. Because without checks and balances in place, I mean, there's nothing, there, there's no barrier. Mm. It's just that's like you have a single opinion and that's okay. going to be it. Um, I forget what movie it was. Sorry to interject. Uh, oh. You can keep going. I forget oh. what movie it was, but I'm pretty sure it had... Oh gosh, and I, I almost got to look it up, but I'll explain a little bit of the plot. And I th 
I could be way off base, but I think Will Smith was in it where they had three sentient beings like people, but they didn't consider them people because they could predict the future. Oh, no, this was uh, Minority not, Report, not Will Smith. Report. Huh? Minority what? Report. Yes, that's it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And the reason why they needed three is exactly what you're saying, because if one made the decision of who was going to get murdered, like they got it wrong all the time, like they got false positives constantly. So they had the three so that they always had to match and check each other. And then that's what guaranteed in their, you know, according to the movie, it's what guaranteed a 100% success rate of uh, who was going to be murdered, right? So, so. For sure. Um, so then, I don't know, there's some of these projects that, uh, I can't remember which one it was. There's there's like Autodev, or Autogen and Team Dev, and there's a couple projects that essentially just take an AI and split it up. So it takes the model and gives it different roles and says, okay, you act as the CTO, you act as the QA, you act as product, and you act as dev, and here's your goal, and then it'll just essentially flip between the different roles. So mm -hmm. if you have something that's really big, and you can just chop it up into pieces, would you still have concern, I guess, that it's, it's still going to bleed into the different parts? Yeah, I don't know. I think it almost, not to make it human, because, you know, I don't think it is yet, but like to to make it human for this example, uh, you're still, I guess, like the, the beauty of what a melting pot brings or like a room of people with different ideas and different backgrounds is because they come from a different background. So like for this analogy came from, let's say Microsoft's AI lab and it collaborated with open AI, AI's AI lab. They built differently, right? They, they literally, you could almost argue going with the human analogy, they were grown up in a different place. They had a different upbringing that had different values instilled in them they were taught different things and these two models are different so then when they get thrown together one as dev one as qa they're gonna you know come back and forth and come to some agreement probably more often a better agreement than if you had two people who are direct clones doing two different things they probably wouldn't argue at all because they're clones they're like yep that sounds perfect so i almost wonder breaking up a big model into small roles is no different than is having one big model is do it all. Like why even break it up um, versus having multimodal, which is supposedly supposed to be completely different models that specialize and have nothing in common uh, debated out and like throw down to try and get the best result. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess it would, it, yeah, if you're, if you're running off the same model, then it trained or different models will be trained off of different sets of parameters. I'm sure a lot mm -hmm. of it would end up being about the same, but but yeah, there probably would be some variation. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we all share ninety nine point nine nine percent of our DNA, but look how different we are, right? Like just that point zero one percent, like is is enough to be who we are, right? You almost could again, not to make it human, but you could almost apply something like that to the AI, where they are trained basically the same. They are kind of built. I mean, it's math, it's science. Like you kind of only can do it so many times, so many ways. But just like human biology, even just a small difference can escalate to something massive. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Eric. No, no. So the, I think of it like, I mean, in a very simplistic example of that. So if, if I, if I write a set of like coding standards and will you take a story and you write the code exactly the way that I've written my coding standards, right? Like these are all my preferences, formatting, not using Vim. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but like all of the standards, right? So just like, you're basically writing the code exactly the way that I would. When I review that, I'm not going to have a negative opinion about it at all. Right. right? Okay. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's right. wrong either. But even if I'm the QA for it, I'm going to look at it and go, oh, you did it exactly like I would do it. This has to be right. You know, confirmation bias or whatever. Right. Okay. Um, right. That's the, way I, that's the way I look at that. So if you took a single model and basically just told it to do five different things, basically putting five different constraints on it, I don't know if you get the same result as if you, like we're talking about, you have five tailored models that right. are like truly trained in a discipline. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I think you probably get the most most benefit. No, I agree with you. I, that's where I was going with. I think you explained it better. But essentially, that's what, that's what I was trying to say as well. I agree with I'd that. I'd be curious to see how the market plays out with that, though, because I would imagine those tools that you just listed off, Jay, exist because they're it's fast to do, right? For it's, sure. It's quick right. to have a model to basically just split it up and say, all right, you can go do things instead of like, yeah. Now we got to hire a team of data scientists and spend the next six months doing analysis and training and like, yeah. Right. Well, and, and some of those projects also, you can change it so that you can set it up. So 
each role has a different model. So you could connect it to like, this role is GPT-4, this role is Gemini, this role, yeah, this is the local model that I'm running. Um, so that's also an option. Well, and I, and I do think that's kind of, I don't know I, know, I know that's one of the big things that everybody's worried about. So that there will be this, you know, all powerful AI uh, that, you know, OpenAI has, has the, the AI model and I just, I just, I, I don't know. I just don't think that that can happen. Like there, there's already, there's so many open source models now and other people that are building models like AI or open AI will be probably a big leader and it's going to come down to resources and whoever can do the most training the fastest, that's only going to be for a little while. And then, you know, there's too many other interested parties and other people that are doing the same thing. They're going to be able to catch up very quickly. So you're going to have a lot of models. Yeah. And you're in a field where, <laughs> I mean, Telling somebody that they have to use a certain package or a framework, you see how well that goes. <laughs> yeah, now right. Yeah. Basically, saying like, guys, we have a model. We're just all going to use that. Right. Not a chance. Can't even get people to agree on pizza toppings, man. Like, right. You know, they all have to use the same AI model. Like, no. Yeah. But at the same time, it'll be like that'll be the that's the big money sink is people to build out the model and sell it. You know, it might be the, the next big digital landscape like uh, like cloud compute. Tons of mom and pop shops, but they all obviously, you know, gravitate towards the big, big ones. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this, this whole, this whole uh, thing, because kind of going off what you said, Jay, and, and also you, Eric, but like the whole idea that like everyone's going to have their own model at some point, I feel like. And it doesn't have to mean like everyone, literally one to one, every person on this planet is going to have their own model. We'll have no bleed over or crossover, but like it's going to get to a point where you may start from the same base plate, right? Like think of it like an OS, mm -hmm. like everyone pretty much has three OSs. And I'm saying like Linux as a general, right? Like I know right. there's obviously lots of different flavors, but they're basically three and that's your starting plate. So that you basically have three options. And then from there, everything's different, right? Like my Mac is not set up the same as your Mac and you know microsoft and linux especially right so custom, like can really customize that with all the distros and stuff so but everyone kind of starts the same so maybe it's the model there's like three options out there and maybe one of them is microsoft and the other is open ai and the third is google maybe that is the world we live in but then from there you will just completely diverge yourself into something new because you'll turn it into whatever you want it to be with your own data with your own i mean think of social media right at some point Someone's going to build a model where you just have to hit one button that says yes, and it takes all your social media data and just constantly trains the model nonstop forever. And that means every post, every like, every ad, every Google search, right? Like that's just all going to be injected and embedded into the model. So then it can just serve your life for you, right? I mean, it's already really good at giving us suggestions. Imagine if AI could do it as well. So at that point, then every model truly is unique because it's just based on whatever you use the internet for and then and then it tailors to you specifically. Yeah, for sure. Uh, especially, I mean, even just yesterday, I think Google Google released their open source model. Um, now there's there's Llama uh, from Meta. I mean, I think Llama 2 is out, 3 is supposed to come out here, or Llama 2, Llama 3 is supposed to actually come out here in a little bit. Uh, then there's you know other projects like Open Chat and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Open AI, I think is open source, GPT three, so they're they're kind of lagging really? behind. I think, yeah, they open side three, not three point five yet. So someone was just asking. Well, because three point five is still like that's still oh. the base for ChatGPT. Like that's right. That's the free free tier that everybody uses. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. So they're not open sourcing that yet. But uh, I think yeah, someone was asking if like basically they'll just go like a, a version down when they go to GPT five, then they can open source three point yeah. five and yeah, and so on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so then I guess kind of going back to what we we're talking about, I guess, with AGI and and uh, I guess, I don't know, thinking about. So then at, at some point, then you have your own little trained model and uh, uh, do you start to think about it as like its own entity? So is it is it it's it's your algorithm or it's it's acting as you, but is it its own entity? And I'm mostly just trying like, to have rights. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, uh, mostly trying to segue into uh, the Canada Air uh, situation, where if the, uh, the AI starts making offers and, and deals with people that's different than what the company wants, then, you know, how does that look? It, it, it reminds me kind of like of, uh, I don't know, I guess, legal ruling that, that a corporation is like essentially a person, you know, and now mm -hmm. it's kind of the same thing that's happened with AI. That Canada Air, I think, was using an AI chatbot. Um, one of the customers 
was chatting with it and it offered the AI offered the customer a refund and then Canada Air said, wait, we no, we don't do refunds. And so now they're in a legal battle of whether they actually have to honor the refund that the chat bot offered. Uh, and uh, even though technically it's their chat bot, but they're saying it's not their chat bot. They don't own that the AI. And so, you know, how does how does that work? Is it, is it its own entity or is, is Canada Air uh, responsible? Yeah, I take it as it, as anything. It's just a tool at this point. And um, I don't know, I, as sad as it may sound, maybe this is a hot take. I think companies treat employees like tools, right? Like you are, you're nothing more than, again, not to be harsh, but you're, you're a tool for the company, right? That's why they use the analogy. We're all cogs in a machine, right? We're all working in this machine and doing our part to like push this forward. And the AI is just another tool. So like whether the tool is AI or the tool is the website or the database or whatever, you are liable as that company to use that tool correctly. So like if your last pass and your tool is a database and you just decide to accidentally unencrypt it and post it to GitHub, right? And now everyone's passwords are free. Like you're liable for that. That was your tool that you messed up. You you made a mistake, like you're using it. You got to treat it properly. And so if they're willing to put this tool, which is AI on a website, it's up to them to use it responsibly. So it's they're definitely liable in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Uh Eric? Yeah, I was just, I was pulled up, pulled up one of the articles just to make sure I, I had all the, okay. the detail. Yeah, thank um, you. I, I was kind of, uh, I'll share the one here in the chat too. Just, perfect. I was riffing on it. I was going by memory. Yeah. No, no. I mean, um, it, like it, just a misinterpretation of, of text on the site, right? Um, about the bereavement fairs policy. Um, it, it, it's an odd misinterpretation, I think, but, um, cause it like, it's, perfectly contradicted you know what i mean mm-hmm. it literally said a thing that the text says cannot be um so that part's certainly curious but that's a great analogy well i mean that's i it, i think it's one of those things of like everybody's i mean this is just human nature though everybody is positive on the thing when it's all going well and then as soon as something doesn't cya mode right um yep for sure we, we see it all the time right everybody's everybody's gung-ho and and a maverick and deploy you know i'll test in production my code's that good yep any issue happens though like oh well it had to be the testing it had to be the requirements it had to be blah blah yeah, right? yeah. Um, i only yeah. test in production <laughs> i mean there's previous hot takes that we've had as a dev sync saying that like unit tests are useless because you might as well just hot fix in production anyways because that's the true <laughs> test <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> That's a uh, whole other discussion. That could be a separate one. So yeah, that, that might be more of a systemic failure that there's not a better representation of production. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, that's definitely a whole separate conversation. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll have uh, probably uh, uh, multiple conversations about that in the, in the future. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would have to agree, though, as far as yeah, it's, I don't know, we're still in the phase of, of AI as a tool. Uh, I don't, it hasn't mm-hmm. quite moved into entity yet. Um, Although, I mean, for me, it, it, I don't know, it just seems like all it, all it takes is a, is a, I mean, there's already stuff like auto GPT and that kind of thing, or it's like, it's just a, a loop You just tell it like, here's your goal, go do it. And then just, and now it's going to do its thing. So. Yeah. But there's been like trader bots forever, right? Like stock trade and even crypto trader bots and their entities standing alone, making money decisions without a human, you know, in the middle, I know AI's more advanced but in the sense you're almost dumbing down the ai to just be more than just a script bot so like if a script bot's not an entity then neither is the ai in my opinion mm-hmm. in that scenario i you guys just gave me a really good idea for a, a topic to go research and that is how all of this applies to things like high frequency trading yeah. where you don't have yeah. the time to you know, i mean you don't have the time to wait on a on a generative response right you don't have gotcha when you're like down to milliseconds oh lower like yeah. nanoseconds right you're, right right you're, you're trying to be the first one to be able to execute a trade at some massive scale at this exact number sure and i know um you know people use like basically everything you can right obviously there's the financials of, of historical trades and trying to estimate but then it's like yeah. sentiment analysis of the news yeah right? so yep. you know, real-time news feeds from reuters and you're trying to extract all this stuff to make this like instantaneous decision um 
but that's all based on, you know, a very basic, um, not even intelligence, just like interpretation. Yeah. In the, in the end, it's a hard coded algorithm that doesn't change. If yeah. in fact it may, if anything, it may modify parameters weight. Like it, you could probably adjust the weight of each parameter dynamically, but yeah. in this, in the end, it's just a hard coded algorithm that takes in these inputs and shifts them into an output and it just runs. And like you said, exactly. It just pulls in all this data. It, it doesn't have time to think. It doesn't have time to have any thought, uh, because as soon as you do that, you've lost. And so, um, I think there's obviously probably research out there, like you said, where people are investigating AI for those types of purposes. But at this point, like I said, I think you're taking AI the wrong way. Like you're dumbing it down to nothing more than just like a little script kitty. And they already do it so well, like you're just going to lose time. In fact, you may not even gain anything. And I think it's a poor use of it. So even if you did use it that way, like I said, I don't think if those high frequency trading bots are not treated as people, then neither would the AI in that scenario. You're forgetting the most important part of the business aspect. Yes. The money. Making money. For sure. If there's an opportunity to, you know, increase your margin 1%, is it worth it? I mean, for, yeah. a lot, for a lot of those companies, probably, you know, when they're doing hundreds of millions of dollars a day. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, they will definitely do if there's a benefit. Uh, yeah. I just don't know if AI is the answer because it is so slow. Yeah. Like, it's just, it won't be able to process it enough. Like, a hard-coded algorithm with adjustable weights is so it's like you you see it today like it's nanoseconds like an ai is just not that fast yet like it just can't do it so i got a guy yeah uh, yeah I'll, I'll ping him tonight and ask him um yeah that's true i'd be curious to see it. yeah because you've, you've got a high frequency trading buddy right i do yeah um, yeah definitely be curious to see what they're what they're thinking about it so glad i don't work in a nanosecond industry <laughs> like, or hey, as long as it day? meets Yep. Yeah, as long as it means 30 seconds, I'm happy. Less than 30, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. Or the or or the fact that, you know, potentially uh, hundreds of millions of dollars are at stake. <laughs> uh, it's it's one yep. thing when you made a client mad, but it's another thing when you've made like a nine figure accident. Like that's that's a little scary. Oh, well, the feature flag accident from, uh, was that like 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago? I'm trying to remember the mm -hmm. name of that company. Um, I'll look it up here while I'm chatting, but basically reused the feature flag. Didn't know it was, didn't know how far ingrained it was into the code base and it activated oh, no. thing that just started. Yeah. Wow. Um, was that I the mean, one that to, they ended up burning? Like they were burning like $400,000, uh, like an hour or something like that because it, yeah, it, it like distributed the wrong thing to different servers and they couldn't roll it back. And <laughs> yeah, wow. night capital, night wow. capital, That's it, yeah. $40 million glitch. Yikes. Yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of glitch, for very current news, if you're AT&T users, you probably <laughs> experienced an outage today. Oh. Uh, and Homeland Security, obviously, as they do, you know, because it's telecommunications, which is governed by the government, are, is being uh, asked to look into it. So the FBI is on just finding out what the outage is. And nine times out of 10, someone pushed a patch that is buggy. Uh, but we'll see what the output is. And it'll be interesting if it's something like that, right? It's a feature flag or it's a freaking semicolon in the middle of nowhere, right? Like it's just, it's always got to be something. So I'm um, I'm wondering, because it was out for a while. Like, I mean, okay. I had no service. Yeah, basically yeah. all day. And and that's why like, you know, why, like calling over Wi-Fi like seems like such a silly gimmick feature, but I mean, it came in clutch today. <laughs> like, I used it I've, all the time. Yeah, I use so, it all the time. Yeah, so it was kind of funny. Um, it's, uh, you know, I, I I did make the joke this morning. Um, for whatever reason, my phone was fine. Um, I don't know, but uh, a couple other folks were having, having the issues and the only thing I could think of was just, you know, one sympathy for the folks dealing with that and just glad I wasn't on that set call. Yeah, <laughs> that would be a panic one. That would yeah. not be fun. Your boss's boss is the FBI. That's not fun, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, that's got to be scary. When so the government's involved. It's it's not fun. Yeah. No. I was kind of was trying to remember. I saw something about. There's a few other. I was going to say if 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 timing is is the issue, there's a few other AI startups that are actually getting some pretty crazy results with. I want to say like natural, it's more like al or, uh, more analog processing as opposed to digital processing. processing. 
and it's yeah. much more suited for neural networks and yeah. they're crazy fast. Yeah. I watched a Veritasium, I believe, video yep. mm. uh, on analog computers and they showcased the massive strengths of some research labs that have not stopped advancing analog. Because obviously once mm. once digital hit the world, like everyone was like, okay, well, it's way old better. news. Yeah, we never need analog ever again. And people have revitalized it for specific use cases that just guarantee, I mean, it's instant. It's the speed of light. Like analog is literally like input, output, boom. Like it's just insanely fast when it comes to huge computational scenarios that don't need to crunch numbers because it's just like whatever the resistors are set at and whatever the the wiring takes it is where the answer is going to spit out, right? So it's literally just how you build the thing. Um, so applying that to, to AI uh, would be a huge research benefit because if you can master that, then that's what you need. Sorry, NVIDIA. I mean, <laughs> we don't need you anymore. Like you just build some analog computers and you're good to go, um, which would be kind of crazy. Is it NVIDIA or is it NVIDIA? I always say NVIDIA. So I've, I've, I've been hearing it lately I, I, just because I think it's completely blown up. Uh, I keep hearing both. Like people pronounce it as NVIDIA and NVIDIA. And I, I've always said yeah. NVIDIA. I've never thought about it the other way. So it kind of caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be ever heard that. What's that? Today's the first day I've ever heard it pronounced like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's yeah, that's what I thought. So I caught me off guard. I was like, have I been saying that wrong this whole time? It's like I, I thought it was Jason, not Jason. I've always said Jason. Oh, yeah, same thing. Wow. Yeah. Uh awesome. Well, covered a lot of AI today. We're at, at about 50 minutes. Anything, any closing thoughts, anything else with any other burning, burning input? I was gonna say a fun thing that if you want to do that I kind of enjoy on another podcast is they always end it with a hot take and they leave it spicy and it <laughs> creates that, that good leading thought for all of us to have into the next one. So like you say your hot take, it could be about anything, literally anything. You could be like burgers are bad, you know? <laughs> okay. Any hot take, you just leave it open. No one can question it. There's no debate, just full stop. We each have one. And then it's just like, makes all of us go, hmm. <laughs> okay, something to think about for next time. Good to know, you know. I don't know. Gotcha. We could try that, you know, or do something else. It seems pretty good. I think you guys are pretty good with your with your hot takes. So mm -hmm. start. Why don't you lead us off? What do you got, Will? Oh gosh. Okay. So good thing this is being edited because I gotta think a little bit. Um, okay. I'm gonna leave it up to the AI to edit it. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. I don't know what this is gonna look like. I'm excited. Um, that's the thing is like I say it and I didn't come prepared as an example, so someone can always <laughs> go before me. Okay. Uh, oh, how about this? Hot take. Wearing shoes in clean shoes. I do specify. Wearing clean shoes or just any sandal inside is not bad and it does not make you a dirty person. Just wear shoes inside. It's comfy. I like it. I may or may not be doing it right now. Eric? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a tough one. I can, I can save you some time, I guess. Or Yeah, go for it. All right. I saw something today. I think it was... Arc Investments, Kathy Wood, uh, that they're they're projecting estimates about AI, so sticking with AI, and they would based on whatever their the history of of predictions and that kind of thing. They're saying that we're anywhere from twenty twenty six to twenty thirty when like a full smarter than human AI AGI entity will be created. So it's it's only a few years away by their smarter by their than estimate. me now. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> smarter than all of us yeah interesting reminds me that type of stat while you're thinking eric that type of stat just reminds me of like the the chess or the the go bots right like how they beat the grandmasters and so it's like uh-oh you know like that that type of metric right like when are we going to build an ai that can beat a chess grandmaster and you know i think that happened like a few years ago right but um like it just those types of stats like remind me of that so mm -hmm. Man, you think I'd be able to come up with something? <laughs> Put um, you on the spot. That's okay. Nah, I mean, really. so um, a cool, a cool feature. I'll tell you is... what. Here, here's okay, here's a hot take. Right. This this isn't much of a hot take. Some people will, some people will probably be very, uh, very much aligned to this. But um, eating Taco Bell two to three times a week. Nothing wrong with that. That's a good one. There That's we go. That's a good one. I like it. Yeah. Now, okay. Just to, I know I'm not going to rebuttal. I just want to clarify. Are you saying Taco Bell? Or are you saying fast food? Oh, no, I'm talking about Taco Bell. Okay. So specifically Taco Bell is the call okay. out where like just, okay, I like it. Good one. Perfect. Cool. All right. Good deal. Yep. We're right at about, about an hour. So awesome. 
thanks guys i guess we'll look forward to uh i don't know whenever the next one happens hopefully next week <laughs> yeah all right we'll talk to you later cool see you see y'all